What's up guys, welcome back to the channel on uh, my likely final nine holes of the day here. Haven't played back here, played around to record anything in a little over a month, so I think I'm gonna call it a day um, after this nine holes, making it 27 for the day versus my usual 36. But continuing on with the Villager series, um, played an executive first when I came out, just played the Evans Prairie Kill Deer course. And now for this video, we are doing the Evans Prairie Country Club Osprey course. So I believe it was the kill deer and the egret. I played um, in person in real life on course on my last trip to the villages. I believe that was the uh, four man scramble I did with Rick from Golf in the Villages and my two buddies, Matt and TK. Um, so I haven't played this Osprey course, I believe, but we're gonna give it a go here. Um, I mentioned it last video, but I've been going through alphabetical order. I was planning on doing Kane Garden, um, two out of the three championship courses there, but for whatever reason, it must be a glitch in the Garmin um, software, the Home to Hero software. You usually type in the course and it brings up the different individual, um, so like you would type in Kane Garden Country Club or whatever, Kane Garden, and it would show you the, uh, the different courses you could play, and for whatever reason, that course just had all of them listed under Kane Garden, so it kind of defeats the purpose of what I was trying to do of splitting up these courses. So I had to skip that one onto uh, Evans Prairie. Again, 27 hole championship course located at 1824 Evans Prairie Trail in the village of Collier. So um, we're going to give it a go. Again, haven't played back here, and I had hit balls for about 45 minutes about two weeks ago. That was the last time I picked up a club. Um, haven't recorded anything in a little over a month. <laughs> so expectations are low, but all I'm really focusing on is one, putting the club on the ball and uh, just trying to swing a little bit harder, give it a little bit more gusto off the tee, if you will, with drivers. So that's really all I'm really trying to do is just swing a little bit harder at it off the tee. And then we'll live with the results. That usually comes with some more wayward shots and not the most consistency in the world, but trying to creep up speed and then um, trying to scramble from there. But Garmin Approach R10 behind me, a DIY level stand, Country Club Elite mat, um, Callaway Super Fast Balls, DIY Stance mat, 10x7 nets, and Home Tee Here you're seeing within the Garmin Golf app as the simulator software. So, without further ado, first hole part four, 414, playing from the furthest back tees like always. Let's see if we can keep the speed speed up and uh, give this one a little bit of a ride off this first tee. Felt pretty quick again, just a little bit low in the face. Gonna be kind of a low line drive up the middle, but take it. We'll see if, how much rollout we get. Could be 270-ish. 273. I guess for the sake of it, we'll take a look at it this at this one. At this point, we're going on to 27 holes. But 104, 151. Not horrendous. Still looking for that 110, 115-ish club head speed, ultimately. But got to work our way back up and I think it's about 45 degrees right now I think um, even like that swing right there at like 105 ish I think if it was summertime right now and I was in shorts and short sleeve shirts sweating out here and it was like 80 90 degrees out or whatever I think I'd probably be able to get that extra five mile an hour just there and then from there just keep working up but it is what it is when it's off season colder out your body can't move quite as quick but Second shot here, we'll take that off the tee all day long. Um, 158, I'm gonna go nine. Oh my goodness. That might be the worst shot I've hit all day. Talk about uh, trying to get the club face on the ball. I almost completely missed that. That was as low and about as healy as you can hit it with it still going somewhere. Up by the green though, somehow. 18 yards in the rough. Call it another two yards because we're in the rough, so you need about 20. I'm gonna go 60 degree. 
Probably should have just hit an 8 iron there, but. Popped it up. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like Garmin didn't like that one. Didn't have the club grounded behind the ball quite long enough. Needed that extra half a second. That would have been fine. But get a second chance out of here. Kind of the same thing, but that one was hit harder. That's going to need to get down. First one actually probably would have been better, but this is what it is. I think that's going to be a bogey. Bogey to start it. All right. Second hole, par five, 544. Split fairway here. Keep it right about there. Honestly, so 268 right there, down one, 267. That's towards the end of the fairway. No shot, I make it into the water there, but it would be a nice uh, boost to the ego if I really hit one good and uh, put it close to the water. That's not in the water. That's very, very, well, maybe in the water on the left, but that was very low in the face. On the bright side, well, I guess when you don't hit them well and I'm swinging a little bit quicker, get some extra distance out of it, that was pretty horrendously struck. 290 left. Gonna go four hybrid. Whoa. Almost tripped over here off these bricks. Usually play this to about 240, 245, so look and just put something up there. Or chunk it out to the right. That also may be water trouble. Luckily, because of the, this entire hole is basically the way I think about it, is it's, it's shrunk down um, into like a portrait style. So it seems like um, that should have gone further right. And side spin's not a super strong suit of the R10 anyways. That one realistically would have gone further right in real life. But considering the whole hole is shrunk down to fit into the size of the screen, um, basically it seems like the ball comes out a little bit straighter and ends up a little bit straighter versus if you had it landscape style and uh, it's able to get more of the wider hole layout into the into the screen it would probably show more of an exaggerated left and right I would think but I think this is a better viewing style all right luckily it's par 5 107 down one and we're in the rough so 106 plus another call it 10 11 um, I'm going to go approach wedge. What is that? 106, 116, 117. Struck it pretty good. I just pulled it. show you guys that one a little bit healy on that but it's pretty cool almost every single shot I hit I don't know if it's just the ball or what but usually leaves an imprint so that one was right this thing will focus so right there you guys should be able to see that I know the right side of the screen has the, the video but that's right where the that contact was there as far as top and bottom of the club that was pretty good it was just a little bit healy and I pulled a little bit but all right, third hole, par four.
looking for 275. I want 275 total, and I'm looking for 105 here. And in order to do that, I have to hit something that resembles the middle of the cliff face here. Let's see if I can do it. Pie on the face. It's gonna be a pop up towards the right. Not quite. For a miss hit though. I always seem to do that. Last one was really low in the face, kind of overcompensate. That one was really high in the face. All right, just creeped into the rough. 106. Basically the same shot again, so approach wedge. That one was dead center of the face, but I did the same thing. I pulled it a little bit left again, or a lot left on the green, but that was... It was well struck, now I'm just releasing my clubs, or releasing my hands and the club face a little bit too much. Those forged faces though, you can tell, they do feel good when you center it up. One over through three, fourth hole par three, 182 down two, so 180. Um, some of the alarm going off. This would be... 7 iron, but I'll show you guys. I talked about it, or I showed in the first video, I think I talked about it in the second, but um, when I got this club, these lightly used um, combo set, the head of the 7 was about half of that. Um, it's coming off a little bit more, so I'm going to call TaylorMade after I'm done here, after this round, see if they'll uh, I can ship it to them and they'll basically re-epoxy it, but I'm going to leave this in the bag. This would be a 7-iron shot, but I really don't want this club head to come flying off and then possibly lose it in the woods. So I'm going to go up to a 6-iron, and we'll see if I can kind of flight a 6 in there at 180. Usually this is closer to a 200 club, so... Tad high in the face. Should be pretty straight though. Struck it halfway decent. May need to get down just a little bit. I think I hit it too good. Take that though, for sure. Kind of a club that I wouldn't necessarily hit from that distance, but 196, like I was saying, about a 200 club, and I choked down on that, but oddly enough, sometimes when I choke down, I hit it and make better contact. That was pretty well struck. Just off the back though, um, 15 yards in the rough, so need about 16. 16 and a half to be exact, going 60 degree. Popped it up to the left. It's going to be, I think, a little bit long left. We'll see if it lands soft. Ooh. Take that. Tell you what, though. Shots like that six iron, that was about as good as I can hit that club. Those are the shots that make me want to keep playing and come out here. Again, more frequently, it's those well-struck shots that give you hope and uh, make the game fun to play. In between all the terribly struck ones, but fifth hole, par four, three, two, eight. It is fun though, swinging harder off the tee. low it's going to be up towards the left not terrible though I feel like when I first started playing obviously you're just swinging out of your shoes you don't really know how to necessarily play golf in the best manner that you should and then 
even the first year of doing this channel, I was swinging a lot harder off of stuff, and I've improved, I think, my swing technique, all those things, even mindset course management more so, but I would say over the past year, I've dialed things back a little bit in the sake of more consistency, better scores, which has helped, but I want to, uh, again, start creeping things up, but it feels, feels good, and it's a lot more fun to uh, swing more so out of my shoes and really give it, give it a rip off the tee versus trying to play something out in the middle more so, but... 53. Approach wedge. A little bit low, pulled it left. Should be on the green though, I think. Nope, long. I stand corrected, like usual. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, definitely not happy about that shot, but those kind of touch shots without having played around in over a month, kind of what to be expected to... Should be able to hit the green from 50 yards, but can't get too frustrated with something like that on a day like today. 60 degree. Drop kicked it, but I think it'll work out. We only needed 13, 14 yards. Par could be worse. All right, one over through five, six hole, par three, one, seven, two, up one. Um, so again, this would be kind of, it's kind of an in-between number. Um, this would be a strong eight, kind of softer, smoother seven. Considering I'm leaving the seven, I'm gonna try to muscle up this eight, I'm leaving the seven in the bag, that is. Um, See, so yeah, I'm gonna try to muscle up this eight, see if I can get, get it to the front. Hung back on a little bit, floated a little bit higher than I would have liked, but we'll see if I got it there. Go. All right. Decently struck. 168. Three holes left, seventh hole, par four. Three, nine, six. Slight dog leg left. I guess we'll go that way. I do kind of miss my sim too. Maybe I was just swinging it better and quicker off the tee, but it seemed like from all the work I put in with that club, I was hitting it a lot better than this stealth two plus off the tee. But Not terrible, kind of up the right, coming back. I was actually pretty close to the middle of the club face. That one wasn't quite as quick. Didn't get quite as much speed on it, but I bet, I don't think I'm gonna be able to catch it in time, but ball speed was probably up on that 280, I think it said, on the rollout. That was pretty much dead center of the club face, so that was better struck. Not as much club head speed, but um, considering Middle of the club face, the efficiency and ball speed was probably up on that, so we'll take that for sure. 121. Go approach wedge. Thin and toey, we'll see. Definitely not the best shot in the world, but we got it on the green, so.
Eighth hole par five. Big old dog leg right. Let's see if we can cut this corner a little bit. Maybe about there. 289 is not on the cards, but I think that's the line I want to take. Give myself some room both left and right. Let's see if I can square it up again like I did on the last one. That one felt pretty good. Two eighty on that last one. Don't remember the last time I came out here and hit something two eighty. Again, not quite as quick. I can feel fatigue creeping in, but that was still decently struck towards the middle of the club face. So we'll see. That rough might kill it a little bit. Let's see if we get two seventy five. Two seventy nine. Two eighty again. All right. We'll take a look at that one. That one wasn't quite as good. 104, 148, attack angle, might just be slightly better launches and uh, squared up a little bit more. Still don't have the most faith in the world about some of those speed numbers, considering what I have to do to manipulate the weather settings for the distances, but I mean, it makes sense. I'm swinging harder off the tee, getting more distance, so. All right, 231, so I could either choke down a little bit on the four hybrid or I could try to swing hard at a four iron probably go four hybrid probably a better better club selection Had heavy, let's see. Still struck it halfway decent, might have took too much off of it. Big old bounce and rollout though, we'll take that. All right. Maybe I just need to take a month off in between playing rounds, come out here and uh, have super low expectations and uh, play a little bit better somehow. Not that we're lighting up the scorecard by any means, we're even, but those were, uh, I mean, 280 off the tee, and then pretty much exactly what I was looking for with that four hybrid. That was a pretty good hole in my books. Ninth and final hole here, par four, even through eight. Let's see if we can get 275 plus again. This will be good. I don't know if 280 three times in a row is in the book or is in the cards, but um, be good. I think I'm going to call it a day after this. Be good to. Uh, Finish up here with another well struck T shot. Mm, felt a little bit quicker, but that was a lot lower on the face. Still should be fairway. It's going to be up the left. Kind of a low line drive, but. Two seventy one. Not too bad. All right, 164, I'm gonna go eight iron. I do think, I mentioned it in past videos, but I think part of it, one, it's just fun to swing quicker, but I think my, uh, instead of overthinking and trying to basically steer it off the tee as much, swinging harder, I kind of let my instincts take over a little bit. It seems like I'm making slightly better contact, just kind of swinging harder at it and um, hoping it goes straight versus trying to dial things back and kind of steer it and guide it off the tee a little bit more. But, Eight iron. Pull it left. We'll see. Maybe front, front side left. Popped it up a little bit. Struck it kind of hard, but wow, that flew a lot. Landed soft too. We'll take that. You do get a little more distance when you kind of pull hook it. Versus a high spinny fadey slice, but all right, so better than the last one from Evans Prairie Country Club Osprey, um, even par 36. So start off with a bogey, got a birdie on eight, the rest were pars. Take that all day long, and uh, six out of seven fairways, 
not too shabby. Green's regulation, kind of low there. Four out of nine would have liked to have been at least five, six, seven. But it is what it is. And then 14 putts is actually not bad. So, I mean, all in all, relatively happy. Got some good drives in there. Um, my little plan of coming out here and swinging harder, at least for those couple holes, seemed to pay off. Those last three, 280, 280, and then 270 something, whatever that was. But that feels better to, uh, I know I'm capable of hitting it harder and further off the tee. It's just getting in the right mindset and kind of training my body to get it into that, I guess routine of swinging harder and just kind of letting it go letting it fly off the tee versus really trying to focus on hitting fairways and in distance there's no right or wrong way to do it there's benefits and positives and benefits of both kind of styles if you will but for me um that's my most enjoyable part of the game i think is when you really connect on one off the tee makes the game a lot more fun so we're gonna keep doing that for a while um i'm gonna call it a day i'm gonna give taylor made a call here Hopefully they take care of me on that seven iron. If not, I'll have to uh, do some research of uh, local golf shops. It's It's gotta be a pretty minor, relatively cheap fix. It's not like the shaft snapped in half or anything. Um, it's just something that a uh, little bit worrisome back here. And especially if I was playing on course, you don't wanna take out that seven iron and have the club, club head come flying off. So we'll see, hopefully they uh, take care of me like they did last time and make it an easy situation of me shipping it back and they uh, turn it around pretty quick but hopefully you guys enjoy another round back here um, stay tuned for again more rounds back here because this is the easiest most successful way for me to play golf but also some uh, on-course videos that take a ton of time for me to go through and edit but um, I know you guys like seeing those so there's more of those to come as well but until next time don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next course